गुड मॉर्निंग एंड गुड इवनिंग आई एम रियांका आई वर्क एज अ सीनियर डेटा साइंटिस्ट इन वॉलमार्ट ग्लोबल टेक एंड टूडे इन दिस सेशन आई विल टॉक अबाउट वेरियस टेक्निक्स दैट वी टेक फॉर लैंग्वेज प्रोसेसिंग एंड आई होप बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस वीडियो यू विल हैव सम अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द प्रोज एंड कॉन्स ऑफ द स्टेट ऑफ द आर्ट टेक्निक्स सो वी विल कवर बोथ फ्रिक्वेंसी बेस्ड एंड प्रिडिक्शन बेस्ड वर्ड एम्बेडिंग्स विच आर मोस्टली सुपरवाइज and one unsupervised text modeling technique so in machine learning we often encounter two types of data so for example i want to predict the next year sales for walmart and i have all these variables store size items in a department population of a region and all of these are numerical variables and easily understandable by the machine so that comes under structured data and any ml model that we perform on this type of data can come under conventional machine learning models now suppose i have to get a performance score of a product by analyzing the reviews at walmart.com now reviews in its raw form is not understandable by the machine right so that's come under unstructured data so anything we do on text image or video comes under natural language processing and deep learning so in this video our objective would be on the text and how we can get the numeric representations of those texts so in case of frequency embedding we can get three types for example if we have the document term matrix where the documents are in rows and the words are in the columns then we can fill in the cells with the term frequency number of times a particular word or term appears in a document we can have another which is the inverse document frequency that is number of total documents divided by number of total documents where the word has appeared and we multiply it with the term frequency we do that because we want to maximize the influence of the non frequent terms and then there is another one which is the co occurrence matrix like number of times both the words has come together right but there are some drawbacks so for example the words will not be present in all the documents so most of the cell frequencies would be zero there is no word context because the order of the word is not maintained and if we have a huge number of documents then it will take a huge memory to store these matrices so how can we get rid of that so we have something called the lsa latent semantic analysis what it does is it tries to combine the words based on its semantics so for example i have three words folk people and rock then it will combine folk and people and separate out the rock now how it will do that so we will have this dtm which is the matrix and we will decompose it into three different matrices u sigma and v where u and v are orthogonal matrices which are dependent on the eigen vectors of dtm and sigma is a diagonal matrix where d1 d2 those are the singular values which are based on the eigen values of the dtm matrix right now if we get a lower dimension of this sigma matrix we will get a lower dimension of the dtm by rank lowerization so what it is trying to do is that it is trying to create a space where the similar words will be closer to each other and this space is called embedding space now suppose even if we get rid of sparsity and storage what about word context suppose i have a sentence that bob dylan was a catalytic figure in folk rock music now in the context of music we have a folk and rock coming together right so can we capture context let's see so now we get into the prediction based word embedding and what we will do is we will create one nlp task and based on that task we will try and see if we can get the word embedding so primarily we have two types of prediction based word embedding one is skipgram model that is given a word we try and predict it's a surrounding context words and cbow which is just the opposite so how it does so for example i have a sentence which is you may say i am a dreamer and we set up a context window which is one and create the training data 
So for example, you have a word may, then you will take both pre and post as the context word. So both you may and may say will be your training examples. We create the vocabulary from all the words of all the sentences. And let's say we restrict it to 10,000. So all the words will be one hot encoded, that is one cross 10,000. And if we have the WT as a center word, then we try and predict the probability of CT being a context word. So that we get a likelihood. What is the likelihood? That we are getting the same probability that given WT, what is the probability of WT plus J, where J is the context window which runs from suppose minus M to M, if my M is the context window. And T is the total words in the corpus. Now, with that, what we do is we create a neural net and we have this one cross 10,000 one hot encoded vector, which will come as an input. And then we have a hidden layer with the linear neurons. The number of neurons will be a hyperparameter and it will tell you what will be the dimension of the word embedding itself. And the output layer is a softmax layer where each of the neuron will be saying how much probable a particular word in the vocabulary is of being a context word. And we have this loss function, which is the negative log of likelihood. And we run this. So what do we get from this is that the word vectors from input to hidden layer weight matrix. So the input will be one cross 10,000 and the hidden layer matrix will be 10,000 cross 300. From there, we will get the word vectors of 300 dimension. So now we can at least get both the semantics of the word folk. Okay, so as per whatever we have discussed, so which one do you think would belong to Skidgram and CBOW? Now you can take a moment to understand it, but it's really easy. So for CBOW, we have context words and we want to predict the center word. So basically the B is the CBOW. So we will have the second one as the correct one. Okay, so let's move on. Now we have this architecture, right? So with the input vector as 10,000 neurons and the hidden layer with again 300 neurons. So we are actually learning 3 million weights in each of the weight matrices for input to hidden layer and hidden to output layer, which is a lot, right? So the problem would be, it would be very slow to train. So what can we do? Now, there are a few sampling techniques and that we can perform. So for example, subsampling. What we do is we remove few of the frequent words, reducing the training example. So for example, in the sentence we had, uh, you may say I'm a dreamer. The word A doesn't necessarily add a lot of value. And if we remove A, then both I am A and A dreamer will be removed, right? There is another one which is called negative sampling. So what we do is now in the in this architecture, you can see that if the output layer has 10,000 neurons, then for all of the neurons, we have to update the weights, right? But what if we can sample few of the words and just measure the weights against them, right? So for example, again, if I have I am and dreamer, then probably after I am, I will be more interested to put one or the higher probability against a dreamer than the rest of them, right? So we can pick few of the frequent words and put zeros against them. So that's where we don't have to learn all the 10,000 words, right? Now, as we have both subsampling and negative sampling, it might be easier to train these networks, right? But what we are lacking is the order and also the context of the full sentence. So can we do something better? Let's see. Okay, so suppose we have this NLP task, which is the sentiment classification, and we want to understand what is the sentiment of this sentence, what a wonderful world. So let's say this is my RNN architecture. So we have something called the time steps and all the weights that is input to hidden layer, hidden layer to hidden layer, all will be shared, which is why it is called a recurrent neural network. And the output will be in a format of a vector the good probability and the bad probability, right? And we will have a embedding layer. So it can be a one hot encoded or it can come from the skip gram or CBOW. 
and what we will do is at each of the time step we will pass one word and we will get its embedding now each of these words is dependent on its previous step so you will provide these words sequentially right so the order is obviously maintained we are passing each of the words sequentially the second is even though it is maintaining some context but if the sentiment is in the last part of the sentence or there are some contrast words like but though then it will not be able to understand the sentiment properly so that's why we do another variant which is like bidirectional rnn or lstm so we provide both left to right and right to left and we concatenate the hidden states of forward and the backward pass now the third and the last characteristic would be that now we are training to get the embeddings as well as the prediction of the sentiment classification right so that's where it will be very longer to train and as it is dependent on the previous step so it is not suitable for gpus which are great for parallel processing so now the question is can we parallelize the sequential data so in 2017 we came across this transformers architecture this has been built for machine translation so for example if i want to translate a sentence from english to french then i will be using this encoder decoder architecture now whatever we have discussed we have seen that in case of rnn or lstm we pass the words sequentially and we get the word embeddings so each step is dependent on the previous one but in case of transformer we can pass all the words simultaneously and we can get the word embeddings simultaneously so the input sequence can be passed in parallel there is no concept of time step and there is no concept of direction as well there is nothing called left to right or right to left but whatever order we have maintained till rnn or lstm how does that work in transformer right because we are passing all the words simultaneously so how does transformers work in this video we will just talk about the encoder architecture and talk about only the two things which makes this transformer get the word embeddings simultaneously the positional embedding and multi head attention okay so what are positional encoders so now suppose i have two sentences no dark sarcasm in the classroom and i will see you on the dark side of the moon now in the first sentence dark means the immoral ways in a classroom and in the second it's just a light and darkness context right so the same word in different sentences has different meanings the positions of the word matter so that's what positional encoder does it tries to provide a context based on the position of a word in the sentence and these are the formulas that we have got from the transformers paper so the pos is the position of the word in the sentence d model is the size of the input embedding which is 300 and i is the position in the embedding so we have these input embeddings and then we calculate the positional embeddings so for example if we want to calculate the positional embedding for the word dark in the sentence 1 then pos will be 2 i will be all the indices and we will add this to the input embedding now this is how transformers maintains the order through the positional encoders right now we go to the multi head attention so what attention does is it tries to tell us that which part of the sentence we should be focusing on so suppose we have this sentence 2 that i will see you on the dark side of the moon and we take a segment of this sentence which is dark side of the moon now we know that the first and the last part should be focusing on each other like dark is more related to moon what we want to understand that how each of the words are related to the other words in the same sentence so for that what we will do is we will take all the 300 dimensional embeddings for all the words and if i want to understand how dark is related to the other words in the same sentence we will multiply this word embeddings with v1 so that we get the similarity we will normalize them get some weights and these weights will be multiplied with v1 again 
which will give us the attention scores. So for example, what Y2 represents is that how dark is related to the second word sight. And that's how we get the attention vector for dark, which is from Y1 to Y5. This is known as self-attention. Now, what are the characteristics? First of all, proximity has no influence. Then word gives larger weight to itself than its interaction, right? So we are more interested in interaction. And the three is that weights aren't trained. Now, we can train something. So for example, we train a neural network with the linear layer to get these weights, right? So now see that V1 has been used in three places. At the first as an input, then multiplied with the other word embeddings and then multiplied with the weights. So that's why what we do is we learn three linear layers and we call them keys, queries, and values. From the first two layers, we get the weights and then the last layer and the weights gives us the scores, right? Okay, so let's go into the full sentence now. Now, if I focus on the word C, then who will see? I will see. Whom? You. Where? In the dark side of the moon. So the word C has to focus on all the three parts, right? So what we thought that instead of just keeping one layer in each of the keys, queries, and values, what we'll do is we will have multiple layers. Multiple layers will give multiple attentions so that we will get multiple attention scores for each of the words. We will average those out and get one attention score for one word. And that, that's why it is called a multi-head attention. And this can be done in parallel for all the words. So that's what is we have in transformer encoder that with the help of positional encoder and multi-head attention, we can pass on all the words simultaneously and we can get the word embeddings simultaneously. So what are the usefulness of transformer? That it gets the context of the full sentence and it is faster to train due to the parallelization, right? So now we have already discussed more or less all the techniques for getting a word embedding for the text data. And if you think about it, that all the methods that we have discussed under prediction-based word embedding had been neural models and supervised. So as an application, let's look into one of the unsupervised text modeling technique, but we will take help from whatever we have discussed for the word embeddings, right? Okay, suppose we have a number of documents and we want to segregate the document based on its context. And we do not have any understanding of what the context could be and what are the words or sentences it can carry. So for this kind of problem statements, what we use is something called topic modeling. And the model that we use is called latent Dirichlet allocation. It's an statistical model, which is consisting of two distributions, two Dirichlet distribution and two multinomial distribution. So what we are trying to do over here is that with these distributions, we will try and generate documents, which will have some context and the words. And then we will try and compare those generated documents with the real document, right? So let's see how we can generate the documents. So now I have this a triangle where each of the corners represent the context or the topic. And I have a three topics, jazz, metal, and opera. And I want to place four documents within this triangle in such a way such that the document which talks about opera should be closer to the point opera. And the document which talks about jazz fusion should be in the middle of both the corners, jazz and metal. Now, each of these documents will have some proportion of the topic in it. So, for example, which is closer to opera, that might have 90% opera, 5% jazz, and 5% metal. And if we are dealing with, suppose, n number of topics, then we will be dealing with n-dimensional simplex. This one is called par-document topic distribution, which is a Dirichlet distribution. 
Similarly, we can have another distribution. Suppose that is represented by a tetrahedron and the corners are the words. And we will place these three context or three topics within this tetrahedron in such a way so that the topic, suppose opera, is related to drama. So that will be closer to the word drama. Now, this is known as the par topic word distribution, which is another Dirichlet distribution. Now, what we would do is we will choose one topic from the first Dirichlet distribution, which is the document topic distribution, and we will choose it via a multinomial distribution. And with the help of this topic and the par topic word distribution, we will get the words. Now, we have some topics. We also have what words comprises those topics. So we will be able to generate the documents, right? Now, when we have generated one document, what we will do is we will compare it with the real document. And if we think that the similarity is better, then we can say that the real document has all these topics and the words. So that's the topic modeling all about. So how we can do it in Python? So let's see what are the steps we need to take to get to the topics. So first of all, we will have to do the data pre-processing, which is that uh, we have to do the tokenization that we will take the words from the sentences, then the stop word removal, which is the frequent words removal, then stemming and lemmatization. So what stemming will do is it will trim out the word and what lemmatize will do it, it will bring back the particular word into its root word. Now in Python, we have this Jensen model where we have coordinate lemmatizer and simple process. So both these modules will help us to get the data pre-processing done. The next step would be to create the dictionary. Simply how we have created it for the Skipgram or the CBOW. So corpora.dictionary, this module can be helpful for creating the dictionary. And also the filter extremes, we can use that to get to an absolute number that how many words do I want in my dictionary? Or I can pass one ratio. So for example, I want 50% of the total words. Then also I can do that through filter extremes. The next part would be creating bag of words. Now, this is the part where we can use the CBOW concept with the module of Dr. BOW. But we can also use something called the globe embedding, which is a pre-trained embedding model. And after that, we will run the LDA. And I have over here used only LDA multi-core, but ultimately you can use another models which are available in the models section of the Jensen. The output will look like something like this. So there will be different topics. So suppose you have passed that you want a five number of topics, then it will give you five topics with a distribution of the words. It will not name the topics. You will just be able to see five different topics with different kind of words. Now, how do I know that my model is good? Like, how do I assess my model, right? So for that, what we do is something called topic coherence score. And what it will give us is that it will try to understand the similarity between top performing words within a topic. So for example, in the topic two, if we see that W1 and W5, these two have the highest probabilities, 45%, and 34%. So the way topic two will be measured is that the similarity between W1 and W5. And this will be done by the coherence model from the model section. So this is how we will know that how many number of topics we should choose and whether the distribution of the words within that topic are good. So let's look into what all we have discussed. So we have discussed frequency embedding. We have seen that there is no word order or context, even though we can get rid of sparsity or the storage. We have talked about prediction-based word embedding. So at the first in Skipgram or CBOW also, we have seen that there is no context on the full sentence and also it lacks order. In case of RNN or LSTM, we do have the sequence, but as it is dependent on its previous step, 
so it is longer to train and in case of transformers it gets context from positional embedding and due to multi head attention it is paralyzed so that's why it is faster to train now these transformers are the building block for the technology bart which the google has come up with and is extensively used in case of word embedding question answering and machine translation and lastly we have seen topic modeling which is the unsupervised text modeling technique but with the help of the prediction based cbows right now i have a coding exercise for you guys we have a data set of published articles on various machine learning topics and we want to segregate them based on their contents so you will have one data set which is the papers.csv it has only one column called paper text and that is the content of that article and we also have the script which is the topic modeling and this will give you an understanding of the structure of the processes and you need to fill in or complete this script wherever the code is missing this is all i had thank you for joining i am riyanka uh, if you want to contact me you have my email id over here i hope you could learn few things from this session thanks for your time thank you okay so this is the exercise uh, we do uh, want to uh, do the topic modeling and as i have mentioned we do have one data set which is the papers.csv so at first it's just uh, importing the modules and all you will need uh, these three packages so if you don't have them please install them this is the jensen package the nltk and the spacy language model you will need and it has uh, this data has only one column which is the paper text and it has the article the uh, information on the articles and uh, this is uh, taken from the nips conference uh, which is uh, dedicated to machine learning so you will have many different aspects like uh, neural network or optimization or those kind of things so, so we will see in the uh, when the topics come in how we can uh, we have segregated those kind of articles right so here we have around 8000 of those articles but uh, for the time being i will ask you to take a sample of these uh, um, uh, articles like take maybe 500 or 1000 because it will take a longer time to run for topic modeling so uh, yeah do take around uh, 500 or 1000 and then you can try this out okay all right uh, so the next one is and uh, the next one is uh, the text processing so obviously you will have to do some processing on the articles so for example uh, some regex uh, the removing the punctuations and then doing the lower casing so that's where i have put it over here so this is from uh, in any kind of punctuation like question mark or exclamation mark that will be removed and then you will get it in the lower case then again as i have mentioned in the uh, video right you need to do the word tokenization like you need to separate out the words from the sentences so that is where we will use the jensen model the utils uh, module of the jensen model and what it will uh, do is so for example text processed is that column which will which we will get after doing the punctuation removal and lower casing the articles and what we will do is we will take a list of them so we will make a list over here and then we will take that list through this um, function so what this function is uh, doing is it will just take the list of the sentences and for each of the sentence in a list it will try and give out the to uh, word tokens so you need to write the code over here that how we can get the word tokens and you can take uh, take help from this uh, simple pip process this function that i have written over here so uh, try this out uh, i will just go through the entire uh, exercise and then you can try on your own to fill this uh, code coding parts this is snippets right okay so the next part would be the uh, building the bigram models so, so here you can try both with bigram trigram or quadgram models so the phrases 
this function uh, helps us with the bigram models or diagram models so what we will do is there are two different um, arguments and which are important which is the minimum count and the threshold so when i say bigram it will take uh, two words which occur frequently right now how many times minimum i want it to occur so i have given as five times so it will have to occur in the corpus five times together before it can be taken as a bigram and then there is something called a threshold. So, for example, uh, if, if those two words needs to be accepted as a bigram, if this particular uh, value that we are calculating over here, that is greater than some threshold. So, I have taken as 100. The, if you maximize the threshold, you will get fewer phrases. So, I have kept just 100 over here. So, this is the function with which you will get both bigram, trigram and quadgram if you want, right? Okay, so the next part is coming the stop words or the lemmatization. Here we will get the uh, NLTK, uh, use of NLTK. Now uh, we know that what is the difference between stemming and lemmatization, right? Stemming is just, it will stem out the word and lemmatize is, it will take um, the one word into its root word. So what we, uh, we are doing over here, we are just downloading the stop words that comes with NLDK and we will be removing those stop words from the corpus of the text, right? So uh, here, this is the remove stop words function. Here also I have written what we have to do. We have to take the uh, words which are not in the stop words and then use the simple preprocess this function to get to the um, but and to get to the similar uh, words which are not not in the uh, stop words it doesn't belong to belong to the stop words section right so here also you need to write this part of the code okay so here and uh, these functions i have already written uh, the bigram function and the lemmatization so in lemmatization we have allowed the uh, part of speech tagging which is from just this noun adjective verb and adverb okay so the next will be getting the spacey downloaded and here also you will the functions that you create over here right the remove stop words and make bigrams you will use these uh, functions over here to on the data towards which is the list of the tokens on on top of that you will use these functions and then uh, this is the data limitize part so you will use the limitization function on top of that Okay, so the next part would be creating the dictionary and the bag of words. So we are when we are saying the bag of words, we will only go by the term, uh, term document frequency, the TDFs, and we will not here uh, do a prediction based word embedding, but you can always uh, try later with the doc to wake or word to wake, you can try out uh, different things. Here, what we are doing is we are only taking the term frequencies, okay? So at first you will create the dictionary. So using the corpora.dictionary um, and you can, you have to pass it through the date after you get the data limitized, right? So that's how you will get the dictionary and then you will create the bag of words and then the base model. So as I have mentioned in the video, right? So you have the LDA multicode, this uh, function. With, uh, with this function, you will pass the corpus of the text. You will pass the dictionary. You will say how many number of topics you want. So at first you can go about whatever you want. And after that you can tune in. So at first I have taken 10 topics. And also I uh, tell it that uh, how many observations I want for each training uh, training pass and how many passes should be there, right? So that's how I build the LDA model. And then you can visualize what are the topics that are coming in. So now probably you can take a two or three minutes and see, look into the code and see what, uh, if you have any questions or anything, or you can write down these, uh, these code snippets. After that, we can, I have already run it and I do have the results. So we can discuss on the results, but I do take it two or three minutes to try out these things. Uh, these are snippets that you need to fill in.
Okay, any question on the on the exercise? Okay, uh, if not, then I will go into the part uh, where we can look into the um, actual topics that has come up. Okay, so let me go into this one. Okay, okay, all right. So uh, what we were doing over here, so a few of the things where we had to put the code snippets. So this I have ran for all the uh, documents that were available. So uh, for you, probably the same, you will not get the same topics you, if you were able to run. Okay, so the first part where we wanted to do the tokenization, right? And so this is how we will use the simple preprocess that this is the, uh, we will send the sentences and the sentences meaning the list, after we do the list of sentences, we will um, take them through simple preprocess and we will keep this as a true, the act as true because it will remove the punctuation and this will give us the list of all the words or word tokens, right? And the next part will be this one where we are trying to remove the stop words. So, so if in the uh, word, the words that doesn't belong to our stop words, then we will again take it through the simple preprocess, right? Okay. So the next part is here where we are using the remove stop words, this function and make bigrams, these functions. We are only using the tagger component in NLP SPC. We are not using the parser or NER. And if you know what parser or NER is, NER is basically the name, the entity recognition. And the parser is a dependency parsing where we want to understand if there is any dependency between the two words in the same sentence, right? So, yeah, we take also the limitization function on top of these bigrams. And uh, after that, we do have the dictionary and we run this model, right? So this is how we get the topics. Uh, so here, as I have mentioned that I asked for 10 topics. So it is giving me from zero to nine. Now I'm not sure whether this is a optimal choice of topics, but we will get to that. So for example, at first we are seeing that this, uh, this is the different words that we have over here. So for example, uh, network, neural, error, input these things. So probably this uh, topic talks about the neural network. Uh, second also we see, uh, for example, network again, weights, layers, neural. So it is definitely neural network, right? Let's look into something like this, this one. So image, object, model, uh, visual, right? So this is basically pixel uh, filter. So this is obviously a CNN or image recognition. And then um, suppose this one, action, algorithm, state, policy, agent. So this is basically talking about reinforcement learning. So you see that we get a separate, we have separated out the articles based on their topics. So some talks about reinforcement learning, some talks about image recognition, some talks about clustering or neural network, right? But there are few in the top where it can be probably merged. 
the, uh, some topics where we are only seeing the neural networks, neural network weight or layer, something like that, right? So there may have it may happen that we are taking a lot of topics which are not needed. Ten might be not an optimal number. So we want to understand what can be the optimal number. So that's where the coherence score comes. The coherence model. So if we take the coherence model and get the coherence score as we had discussed, so now it is talking about that we have 41% coherent score. Now, if we build another model, suppose with nine topics or eight topics, and we build again the coherence score, obviously by comparing those, we will get to the optimal number of topics, right? So yeah, uh, this is what it is. If you have any other question or anything, you can ask. Uh, otherwise, uh, this is all I had. Mm -hmm.